Hi, Max. Hey, Lars. Great to, great to see you. Great to Here see you. Here we are in lovely Paris. Yes, how are you? Fantastic. Um, well, you have been in Greece recently. Yes. W what was your experience and why is it important? Well, my experience was that I saw the front line of the battle, the front line between metal and paper, between savers and speculators. The Greek people are being disenfranchised by the paper terrorists and their savings have been destroyed and their wages have been destroyed and they're being subjected to austerity measures from the paper terrorists. Now they're fighting back and they're in the square and they're throwing Molotov cocktails and the police dressed up as anarchists, basically in a role of agent provocateur, yeah. are beating their own citizens. So Greek police are beating Greek citizens on behalf of the international banksters. So this is the front line of the war. It's heating up. Now we're going to see this happen in Ireland. You know, Ireland has been acquiescent to the imposition of austerity measures at the behest of the financial terrorists, but that's not going to last. They're going to yeah. erupt in civil unrest. Portugal, Spain, all across Western Europe. So the disease that we saw in Central America, South America, of the IMF and other banksters using paper terrorist weapons to bankrupt societies has gone into Western Europe. And, but the Western Europeans, especially in France, and have a history of decapitating mm -hmm. uh, paper terrorists. Yeah. And this is why God invented the guillotine, yes. to take care of this problem when it rears its ugly head. Yeah. And um, so this is the ultimately the end game for the paper, the paper pushers. Is the, there's a cemetery not far from here with many, uh, many bankers who are buried, but not with their heads. Okay. Um, in, in Greece, in Athens, you've met lawyers who now... That's um, right. What are they doing? They're suing uh, bankers like Goldman Sachs and the government. Uh, the government committed treason when they sold some credit default swaps from the government-owned postal bank to a group of speculators, and then they flipped them a few months later for $27 billion. They're pocketing billions in profits. Yeah. So that was an act of treason because you're, you're dealing with the enemy. You're, you're engaging in arms dealing with the enemy. So they're suing the government for treason. Goldman Sachs, of course, they committed massive accounting fraud in 2001 when they cooked the books of Greece as part of their ongoing onslaught on the rule of law. Yeah. And so they're going, hopefully Lloyd Blankfein will be subpoenaed and brought down to Athens and tried and thrown in jail. Yeah. Um, when, when you spoke there at the square, you said that you are there in, in your own self-interest. That's could, right. Could you explain this? Because, as I was explaining earlier, the wave of capitulation by these peripheral nations to the paper terrorists will end up washing ashore in the U.S. So if you can put a stop to it in Greece, if you can start to prosecute and decapitate the banksters in Greece now, then I say the crime for capital punishment is decapitation. That's the crime for capital punishment. That's the crime for crimes against capital is decapitation. It's capital. Let me start again. I've always said that the punishment for crimes against capital is capital punishment, which means state sanctioned um, termination of life. Yeah. Now, whether that's by injection or by guillotine, I mean, you can take your pick, but the crimes that are being committed by Goldman Sachs and these others against capital deserve capital punishment. I'm, I'm all for capital punishment for crimes against capital of this magnitude. Yeah. Because but that's the risk. In other words, yeah. these bankers are saying, we can steal all day long with, that, with, with impunity. There's no risk. There's no laws. If, if you try to get us on breaking the law, we'll just change the law. Yeah. Okay, that's not right. That's, no. that's the social contract has been broken, as Rousseau has said. And in that case, there must be a revolt. But is this of interest to suicide bankers? Yes, they, they, it fulfills their market ideology, their market fundamentalism, their belief that cash is their god and they're willing to kill themselves. Like the 9-11 brokers who were buying yeah. puts on airline stocks the day before they got murdered by the hijackers. They died happy because uh, we know from Deutsche Bank, which owned, who bought Alex Brown and Sons, that there is a $2 million, for example, in uncollected profits yes. from airline puts that were 
traded on inside information through Buzzy Krongard. That's the direct link. Whoever left that money in the bank and didn't collect it, obviously, is dead because they were in the tower speculating on their own death. That's the suicide banker mentality. That's the Lloyd Blankfein mentality. That's the Jamie Dimon mentality. They would speculate on their own death if they thought they would make a quick buck. Yeah. And that's exactly what they're doing. And that's why, throughout history, there's only one way to deal with these people. Uh, your next day will probably be uh, Spain. Why that's so? right. Well, things are popping off in Spain. The people are finally, they've had enough. They're saying that um, these austerity measures that are that you're asking us to suffer, we're not going to do it, you know. Basically, they're, they're revolting. There's a revolution. Whether it's uh, Cairo, or Tunis, Madrid, Athens, Dublin, it's a global insurrection against banker occupation. Yeah. Gaza, throw Gaza in there. Yeah, why not? But maybe Tel Aviv too one day. Well, Tel Aviv has become the biggest money laundering center in the world now after, uh, after, after Switzerland effectively got shut down by the feds. Yeah, yeah. So all that's moved to Tel Aviv. Ah, okay. Then you see the shekel is doing quite well as a result of it. Ah, okay. Good. Thank you very much. Okay, sure.